Welcome back, everybody. We are going to use up some more of that Easter ham. Or if you don't have any leftover Easter ham, just run to the deli and pick yourself up some ham. And you need to make this casserole sometime and sometime soon because it is a, a winner. It really is delicious. Everybody I've ever made this for goes crazy over it. It's kind of, uh, well, because it's got chicken and ham, I, um, it's more of a spring-like casserole, I guess, rather than, you know, more of a hearty, meaty casserole. Um, and it's really wonderful for dinner parties. Uh, oftentimes we'll have, you know, um, relatives visit from out of town. My mother-in-law will come in from out of town. Um, and I like to get dinner done ahead of time. So this is one of those things that I can actually make this casserole up to the night before. I get it all parked in my refrigerator and then just bake it when she gets there. And it's perfect for entertaining. Um, it's, you know, serve it with a nice springy salad, like my strawberry field salad, some bread and a light dessert. And you've got a fantastic company worthy casserole. I think some casseroles, the word casserole, or in Minnesota, they call it the hot dish. Did you know that, Ann? Nope. Yeah, whenever I travel to Minnesota and I do recipes over there, um, and I say casserole, they say, you mean hot dish? Yeah, they call casseroles a hot dish, so I always have to keep that in mind. So whatever you want to call it, casserole, hot dish, in my book, they are a winner because you can make them ahead. And so many of them are, um, are elegant, like this elegant chicken and ham casserole. So this is an optional step. You can do it if you want to. You don't have to. Um, but if I have the time, I like to pound my chicken breast just a little bit. They're so darn big these days, which is a good thing. Um, and... If you give them a slight pound, and the way I do it is I do it in a Ziploc bag or in between two sheets of plastic wrap so that your whole kitchen isn't wearing chicken, which is not a good thing. But especially when I'm sautéing chicken or grilling chicken, and hopefully we'll be grilling chicken very soon. Actually, the sun is shining. You may have to take advantage of it um, and do it tonight. But chicken... Chicken breasts in general have a thicker part and then they're very thin on the end. So uh, sometimes they really, um, well, if you cook them like this, uh, you can tend to overcook them and so they get dry or um, what happens more often is you undercook them and you slice into the middle and the middle isn't done. Um, so one of the ways to avoid that is just to quickly pound your chicken breasts and to not only make them a little bit bigger, which is nice, but they're going to cook more quickly and more evenly. I always like to rinse my chicken breasts too. Um, I always rinse them under water and then pat them dry. So you don't have to, you don't want to overpound them because you don't want them to tear apart. You also want to use the flat side of your meat mallet, not the, the bumpy side. This is more for tenderizing meat. And this is, you know, the, you know, way to just pound out chicken a little bit. So there's your tip of the morning. If you want to, you know, speed things up, get them uh, cooked a little bit more quickly, pound them out. And the same uh, method I do for pork chops, if I want to cook them a little more quickly, um, pork tenderloin, if I want to get a, you know, flatter, bigger surface. So it's, it's really versatile. Now for this casserole recipe, it's really a breeze. Spray your casserole dish with cooking spray. And you don't need to cook these chicken, chicken breasts at all. Um, we're just going to put them in there raw. But the, the sauce is what makes this casserole. It really does. So we're going to lay our four. You could even do up to six boneless, skinless chicken breasts. But these guys are really big ones. Into a 9 by 13 casserole dish. And see how I pounded them out and they really are now, the width is nice and even. So if you're not going to take the time to brown your chicken breasts, very important to season them well. This goes for casserole, slow cooking. So I'm going to season these with, I love my garlic salt, something I grew up with. Back in the day, we didn't have access to a lot of fresh herbs and garlic and things like that. So my mom and my grandmother always used garlic salt to get some great flavor. And black pepper, I like to use freshly ground black pepper. Quick and easy, and it just adds some more flavor. 
especially when you're not taking the time to brown these chicken breasts. Okay, now for the sauce, which really makes the dish. Starts out with one can of cream of chicken soup. And yes, I get questions all the time. Could you sub out cream of celery soup or cream of mushroom soup? Yes. My favorite soup to use is, is the cream of chicken in this, but cream of celery or cream of mushroom will also work well. And yes, you'll notice a lot of my casserole recipes has some sort of cream soup. It binds them together, makes a nice sauce. Um, but where they take a different turn is right now I'm going to add some sour cream, which is going to take that canned soup taste away. And I'm going to add a little bit of mayonnaise. Not salad dressing, we're using the real mayonnaise. You could certainly use light mayonnaise and you can use light sour cream. And now here is where we're going to have a little fun with this and give it some great flavor. Again, we've got a little bit, about a half of a cup of, but who's measuring there, of dry white wine. I just want to check the casserole that we have in the oven. Ooh, it looks fantastic. And then three quarters of a cup of milk. And we love our lamers milk. Whole skim, 2%, whatever you have on hand. I really like the, the sauce in this recipe really makes it because you want to serve this with, um, I love to serve it with some sort of, a, you know, rice, wild rice or rice pilaf, because it's going to absorb the sauce. I'm just going to whisk this together. While I'm doing this, as we mentioned earlier, book club is back. We have a date, we have a place, and we have a book. So go to our website, find out more details. We're headed to the bottle room in Swamico on May 14th, the book is called Girl in Translation. Call now to reserve your spot. It's a very quick read, and I think you're really going to love this book. So go out and get it and join us. They're going to provide complimentary snacks, and you get to, to buy your beverage, and we get to talk about the book, and it's always great fun. So please reserve your spot. Also, watch for details of our next big night out. We are having a big night out in May at a new restaurant that's getting rave reviews in Appleton. It's a farm to table restaurant. The menu that they're working on is out of this world. Uh, join us for details on that coming up. It's gonna be May 20th at uh, Gather Americana in the Appleton area. Okay, so now on top of my chicken goes some sliced ham, or if you have diced ham left over from Easter, you could just dice it up fine and sprinkle it on top of the chicken. Um, don't need a ton of ham. You can just go to the deli and get some thinly sliced lean ham. That works well, too. And then this sauce gets poured right on over the top of it. So the chicken bakes. And you want to cover this casserole with foil. And you want to bake this about an hour. And that chicken is going to get tender as all get out. And that sauce, which is a little thin now, starts to reduce down a little bit. Really, really creamy and flavorful sauce. And then after I uncover it, I sprinkle some sliced almonds over the top. This is optional. You don't have to do it. Oh, I almost forgot about my cheese. Actually, you want to put that Swiss cheese down right on top of the ham. So we've got a couple cups of Swiss cheese. All right, come back with me. In just a minute, I'll show you what this amazing casserole looks like. It is out of this world. So stay with us, and you can get the recipe on our website. We'll be back. <laughs>